This is the last lecture on electrochemistry and um, we have a few topics that need to be discussed still that we haven't yet talked about. Uh, first of all, we did mention that positive potentials are associated with redox reactions that are spontaneous and negative potentials are associated with redox reactions that are non-spontaneous. So you might have guessed that there's actually a relationship between the cell potential and the delta G of the reaction. Now the actual relationship ultimately has to do with the fact that the potential is given in technically units of um, joules per coulomb, right? And so what we do is we try to convert those units into joules per mole for U delta G. And the way you do and make that happen is to take your joules per coulomb and using Faraday's constant, you can change the coulombs to moles. So you have joules per mole automatically. And then using the number of electrons, you can actually calibrate it so that you actually account for the fact that for delta G, the amount of the substance ultimately matters. So long story short, delta G equals negative NFE. And the reason you have the negative sign is because spontaneous processes for delta G are negative, but for E, they're positive. All right, so let's take a look. So looking at one of the examples that we discussed in the previous lecture, um, you see that for the reduction of permanganate with iron two plus, we have a CE cell potential of 0.93 volts. Using the equation that is provided for delta G, we can calculate the delta G value, right? So we input in that 0.93 volts. We have Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron. And in this equation, we actually have three electrons, right? So this is the number of balanced electrons in the half redox reactions. We have three electrons that are being shuffled between the reduction equation and the oxidation equation. So we multiply by negative three. All right, so coulombs times volts is the same thing as joules. So the answer you're gonna get from this multiplication will be in joules per mole. So all you have to do left is to divide this number by a thousand to get delta G value in kilojoules per mole. And it's as simple as that. So for reactions, you know, like the combustion reaction of acetylene, which technically speaking is a redox reaction because the charges of carbon change from left to right sides of the equation, um, you could also calculate the potential. We have the value of delta G, which is negative 1235.1 kilojoules per mole. So we could solve for the potential, the cell potential, by dividing by negative NF. And what we basically need to do is yeah, plug in the value of delta G in joules per mole, plug in Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole, and we need to plug in the number of electrons. So here, we haven't done this before, so we're gonna have to figure out how many electrons we're actually gaining and losing in the equation. And we can focus on any one of the components, right? So first things first, let's take a look at the charges of carbon. Uh, the charge of hydrogen will be plus one, the charge of oxygen will be two minus, so we're gonna use that to figure out what's going on for carbon. We have two carbons with a charge of X, and we have two hydrogens with a charge of plus one, and the whole thing is neutral, so this has to equal zero. For CO2, we have one carbon with a charge of Y and two oxygens with a charge of two minus, and the whole thing is neutral, so they have to equal zero. So what this ultimately means is that the charge of carbon is negative one, whereas the charge of carbon on the product side is four plus. So, Looking at the carbon, but you could also do the same thing with oxygen, but looking at carbon, we have uh, the charge of one minus going to four plus. So minus one minus four tells you that you're losing five electrons per carbon. And then for oxygen, you go from zero to two minus, zero minus minus two is two electrons per oxygen. So here you just have to multiply the fraction by the total amount of carbons. You have four carbons on either side, so you will multiply the negative five electrons per carbon by four. And on either side, you have 10 oxygen, so you will multiply the two electrons per oxygen by 10. And regardless of how you decide to look at this, you find out that the processing of electrons ended up being 20 for the combustion reaction. So now we know that N has to equal 20. So when you carry out the calculation, divide 123, so 1,235,100, 
by 20, press enter, divide the answer by 96,485 and press enter, you'll find out that the potential is 0.64. And what's kind of crazy about this is that the value of delta G is really large, right? We're in the thousands in terms of kilojoules per mole, and yet the potential is, you know, 0.64. So the proportions are a little bit misleading when it comes down to the potential you could actually be dealing with a very spontaneous reaction. And the more positive this value gets, the more spontaneous the process is going to become. But, you know, just be aware that the proportions are a little out of whack. <laughs> All right. Now let's take a look at the relationship between the cell potential and the equilibrium constant. So we know that delta G now equals negative NFE. But we also know that delta G equals negative rt ln of k so we could make the substitution into this equation and we could ultimately solve for um, the potential so if we actually divide both sides of the equation by negative nf we'll end up getting positive rt over nf times ln of k equals the potential all right now this is the equation you're going to have to use if the temperature is not at 298 Kelvin. But if the temperature is at 298 Kelvin, then we can actually make use of a, of a very cool setup. First things first, R is a constant, 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. The temperature, we're going to take it as being 298 Kelvin for the new derivation that I'm showing. And the value of F is also a constant, 96,485. N is the only variable present in here, so that one we don't input any numbers because that will depend upon what reaction you're looking at. And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert the natural log to regular log. And the way you do that is simply multiply or rather divide the log of K by the log of the base that you have here, so the log of E. That allows you to switch over from ln of K to log of K. And you may be wondering why the heck would I even want to do that? And the main reason is because in redox reactions, there is the likely possibility that you will have H plus concentrations present in your equations. So, since the H plus concentrations, when you apply the negative log to them, yields pH is most um, opportune to deal with the regular log as opposed to the natural log. All right, but all that being said, 8.3145, 298, 96,485, and the log of E are all constants. So you could literally multiply and divide them by each other. Yes, and the log of E is 0.434. So you could multiply them and divide them by each other respectively to find out that the equation reduces to 0 0.0592 divided by the number of electrons times the regular log of K. And this is the main equation that we're going to be using um, in terms of depicting the equilibrium constant from the point of view of the electro potential. Now, much the same way as this applies to delta G, it will apply to K in the sense that the equations that we have here where we do have potentials, you will only get to use these equations if you're dealing with a redox reaction. You will never use, you know, an E potential equation for the equilibrium constant of a double displacement reaction, for instance, because the charges never change. All right, and the second thing is that this is the equation you use if and only if the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Otherwise, you have to revert back to this equation. Alright, so to give you one example of, you know, what you do with this. Looking back at the combustion of acetylene, we now know that the potential is 0.64 volts, and that takes up 20 electrons in this specific balance re reaction. So we're going to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. And in order to do that, we have to plug in the value of 24N, we divide it from 0 0.0592, and then we divide both sides by 0 0.00296, and finally we raise 10 to 216.2. Now if you plug this into your calculators, your calculator is probably going to freak out on you because this is going to be too huge of a number for it to handle it. So the way you want to think about it is that technically speaking, this is the same thing as saying 10 to the 216 times 10 to the 0.2 and that will be the one thing that you do in your calculator raise 10 to 0.2 to get the value of 1.66 and multiply that still by 10 to the 216 so this will be the proper way of doing it
the one thing you do not want to do is to leave the exponent with decimal numbers, right? If you do, simply rewrite this as being the multiplication of two separate exponents, 10 to the 216 times 10 to the 0.2. And 10 to the 0.2, you can convert to an actual number. All right, so I'm going to stop the video right there. And on the next video, I'm going to give you some more detailed examples that now kind of bring the whole story together by introducing the coordinative covalent complexes that we talked at the very beginning of the uh, course. So see you in the next video.